I took the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 out into the Rocky Mountains for a little weekend out and I came back with a lot of thoughts. At $999.99, starting with 256 gigs of storage or 11 dollars for 512 gigs of storage, and that's $1,119, the newest flippy phone sports this awesome cover screen that I'm sort of obsessed with and the upgrades over its predecessor make this one one of my top contenders for favorite phone of 2023. The Z Flippy 5, it's the Z Flip 5. It comes in tons of color options. By far, this line continues to impress me with personality and aesthetics. Of course, I chose this beautiful lavender color. I kind of love it, but there are also seven other colors available via Samsung's online store, which is linked down below. Now, my unboxing short shows off what's included in the box, and spoiler alert, it's not much. I have spent about a month playing with the Flip 5 since its release. I've definitely put it through its paces in all sorts of different environments around here in Colorado. Now that my little baby is updated to One UI 5.1.1, it is time to spill the tea on this little smartphone. By the way, a huge thank you for subscribing via all of my newest videos on this channel. I see you and I appreciate you. She cute. She's small. Form factor wise, we've got a plastic folding display Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the back and there is an aluminum frame. The frame is very shiny as you can see here, just like on the Fold 5 and no major changes to ports or button placements compared to the older flip models. Now at time of recording, I haven't put a case on it yet and so far she still looks really nice and fresh and brand spanking new. It is a slippery phone though. It's very shiny and very slippery so I would probably add a case just so it stops slipping off the armrest of my my couch. This is IPX8, which hallelujah, because I was running around a mountain town in the rain. If you watch my Fold 5 review, the new hinge, which is located on the Flip 5 as well, is very similar. It is re-engineered, giving you that nice, satisfying snap shut and it's very, very smooth movement whenever you open or close it. I love how it shuts flat. This new hinge is such a baller upgrade and not only can it protect your screen better because it is giving you that nice flat shut, but it just looks so dang good. But really though, this new iteration of the flip is kind of a big deal because this new big cover display, it's called the flex window. Instead of that little Tootsie Roll sized screen that we had on the older models on the front, this one actually gives you something that you can, you can more easily view. Now, while it's still not big enough to do major tasks, like I couldn't do any like productivity tasks on the front of this thing, which yes, you can still type on it. It's big enough that you can type on it. You can access a lot more on here. So you can access things like Google Maps or YouTube. You can access a few more via a labs feature, which is built into the phone, or you can add even more via Goodlock's Multistar. Now, if you want a whole hacks and pro tips video about different things that you can put on the front of the screen on the Flip 5, comment down below. I could definitely do a video all about all the cool stuff that you can do with this. And I have to say, it does make a huge difference to the usability of this device. I find that I am much more inclined as a user to use the Flip 5 versus the older models. Like I used to have a Flip 3 and a Flip 2, I wanna say. It is plenty bright right for outdoor use. I used it to track my hike in the mountains. I just pulled up all trails and I was good to go. And it is really quick with intuitive gestures and nice little interface features. Like there's this little pill icon showing you your playing entertainment in the bottom that you can click into. The only thing that I think would make it better is if it didn't have such large bezels around the edges. Those are pretty hefty bezels. Make the screen bump out so that it shares a similar width to the folding display on the interior and push out the bottom so that the two cameras, which are located down here at the bottom, end up just being punch holes instead of this large notch. I mean, Razer did it, so I think that possibility totally exists. Okay, enough about the exterior of this phone. Let's move inward to the folding display. This is a narrow device, but it is not as narrow as the Fold 5's cover display. It looks tall, but it's close to the height of the S23 Ultra by just like two millimeters. So it's very, very close in height. I think because of that, since I already own an S23 Ultra, it was easy for me to adjust to this screen. But because this phone is so skinny, 
it's a very, very skinny phone. If you want to watch something that is 16 by nine rotated, it's still going to have black bars on both sides or zooming to take advantage of the full screen means the top and the bottom of your video will be cut off. Now I do like being able to use it in flex mode with the newly designed flex mode panel and controlling media with the larger icons on the bottom half of the screen. This does not work well with every single app, but it is useful for things like YouTube. The stereo speakers sound average for a phone. They are lacking bass. They are clear enough for podcasts and vocals. But this is a very fast phone with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset, eight gigs of RAM. I do have some benchmarks here to share. I did a whole bunch in 3D Mark. I can tell from the intuitiveness of this phone that Samsung has been spending a lot of time fine tuning how usable the flip and the fold lines are. And that includes the processing power and the graphical abilities. So even though vanilla Android setup are my number one. They are my EG bun. One UI works so well here to the point that I don't actually hate it. I customize my phone so I can use things like Google Assistant instead of Bixby. So I do do my own customizations there. I think the fingerprint sensor, which is found as a capacitive button, it's in the power button right here. It makes sense given how you will naturally hold this phone whenever it's closed. You can put your finger right there and hit that capacitive button. Now, my personal favorite is still going to be the ultrasonic fingerprint sensors because they are faster, but for the form factor, this one actually does make sense. I don't think an ultrasonic one would make sense in this form factor. Face unlock is also available, but I do find the fingerprint sensor to be more reliable. Now, since we're talking about security, the sponsor of this video is Delete Me. If you have noticed an influx in spam in your email inbox or a scammer is calling you on your cell phone number, well, it could be because these scammers found your email address address or your phone number via an online data broker. Data brokers, they love scraping your data from all over the internet and making it easily searchable to the public. And since there are hundreds of these sites, it makes it incredibly time consuming to figure out how to get your data removed and from each site. Ain't nobody got time for that. So Delete Me offers a service where they will continually, every single quarter, monitor these sites for your data and send those opt out requests for you. Because sometimes those data brokers put your data back up there after you've sent an opt out. So you have to keep on checking. They add new data brokers to their service all the time. I have some new ones on my own report that I can show you too. So you don't need to worry about finding them yourself. I've actually paid for delete me for several years now, and it has offered me a huge weight off my shoulders. It has saved me so much time. I actually pulled up my account here on my flip five so I can show you what my dashboard looks like. So here's my actual dashboard from my delete me account. Up at the top, it shows you how many data brokers they're looking at, how many listings they actually reviewed, which don't necessarily match me, but it could have some similarities. So maybe there's other Shannon Morses out there. I don't know. Data brokers with my information 32, and then you get some nice little tallies showing you exactly where your data was found and how much of each percentage was found. So in my case, I think I should sign up my family members for delete me. There's a lot of data on them out there. With Delete Me, you also get this really handy PDF, and this shows you exactly which data brokers had your information and how long it takes to remove your data, if the removal is in process, and if there were any data brokers where your data was not found, it'll show you this nice little clean with a little happy face. So there's a ton of data brokers here that did not have any of my info or any matching queries for my information. And then there were several this quarter that were new or that just had refreshed information. So Delete Me is going through and deleting that information for me. It's pretty cool. So huge thank you to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode. You can use the code SNUBS, that's S-N-U-B-S for 20% off and see how Delete Me can help you take your online privacy to the next level. You can hit up joindeleteme.com slash morse code to sign up today. Again, that is joindeleteme.com slash morse code. And I will put that link down below so it's easily clickable. So it takes about 30 minutes 
units to get up to 50% charge with a supported 25 watt wire charger. It can also do 15 watt charging wirelessly. It can also do battery share with 4.5 watts of reverse wireless charging as well. The battery is kind of small. It's 3,700 milliamp per hour and this is my screen on time. Now remember when I do my test, this is a battery drain test. At full brightness using the main display for normal usage, you will see a much longer battery life. Now cameras are the last major component I really wanted to touch base on. There are two rear cameras and there is also one selfie camera on the interior. Now the rear cameras are here. It's unique to folds in the ability that you can use your rear or main cameras for selfies and group photos. You can use it as a selfie camera. In the case of the Flip 5 though, this is done very, very easily because they're right on the front and you can double click to add your camera double click and it opens your camera automatically. It's one of my favorite little features with this phone. But since these two lenses are near your palm, your fingers might cover them up or it might give you a really, really awkward experience when you're taking those selfies. So I suggest, this is a little pro tip, just flip it upside down and then take the photo because then your cameras are going to be at the top. I think the palm to take a photo is a little bit too quick. So I added voice prompts for the shutter. Okay, let's do a live demo. Hopefully it works. I'm going to say smile. Okay, good. It worked. <laughs> so I just took a picture. There's a bit more of a delay than whenever you hold up your palm. It gets it a little bit faster. So I like having a bit of a delay so that I can pose. There is an ultra wide for some cool scenic photos or group selfies. And you also have your main wide camera as well here on the front, but there is no telephoto and it only does zooms at 10 times digitally. It does take some beautiful photos though via the main and ultra wide. That includes some really nice aperture without the need to use it in portrait mode. Photos of flowers really showed off the hues and the saturation while my landscape shots give us a good idea of its HDR abilities. But some of my photos in the bright sun felt kind of washed out and they lack that saturation that I am so familiar with from Samsung phones. One of my photos from this test on the Flip 5 was also voted as a finalist for a chance to be featured on Condé Nast Traveler. So that's pretty cool. Now the punch hole camera on the folding display, which is on the interior here, is better than the Fold 5's UDC or under display camera. So if you are planning to do video calls, this will give you a better image. The importance of having a good selfie camera is definitely a hill that I will gladly die on. There are a lot of folks in this world who will not take the additional steps to use rear facing cameras for selfies. They are content creators or they need a decent camera for video conferencing. And having an optimal camera on the interior of your folding or flipping screen on a $1,000 plus smartphone should just be standard. Now, I also recorded a whole bunch of videos for you to check out the audio and the stabilization. So let's take a look. A beautiful flowers. Testing the stabilization as we walk around a very dirty and bumpy area of Anderson's farm. This is such a lovely place. Look at these beautiful flowers. They're so pretty. Wow, look at it. Hello, here's the internal uh, folding screen camera lens testing it to see what the audio and the video look like. How's the how's the very bright white clouds behind me look? How do I look? Can you see me under my brim of my hat? Let me know. What's the audio sound like? Do you hear the music in the background? Hopefully not because it's copyrighted. It's cold up here. There's no air. Welcome to 14,000 feet. Whew. So I would say this phone shines for portability. It has that nice quick information on the flex window on the front, and it's wonderful for social media consumption. The screens proportionately are not perfect for entertainment consumption on the interior, and the battery could be better. Neither of the Samsung foldables has cameras that match the quality of the S23 line, though in some cases you are paying more for the form factor. Do you like this form factor? 
factor. I love this form factor. It feels like it is made for me and my smaller size hands. It just fits perfectly into my life. It is still missing those prosumer features that I use daily as a content creator, mainly the highest quality cameras, like no zoom, give me a zoom, but it is so fun to use. I think that any non-content creator would love this device, especially if you want something that is much smaller and paying one grand MSRP versus the 2K that you would pay for a Fold 5 is a huge difference especially if you factor in things like trade-ins, carrier deals, or holiday discounts. Obviously, I think the Fold 5 has a very different market niche, but this one is also a foldable, so that's something to really consider. Do you want to see a deeper dive, a comparison of this phone versus any other ones that are coming out this year? Definitely leave a comment down below, and I will do my best to get those in for you. Thanks again so much for subscribing and to Delete Me for partnering. I'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.